God's relationship with Israel began like a marriage. God would be faithfully hers, and she would be lovingly his. On a high and holy hill, they made their covenant. God would live with his bride, and her heart would be vowed to him. But the bride's love would be short-lived. Israel's vows to God would quickly slip, for she would commit adultery, whoring after false gods on their high hills, bowing in pagan courts, and bringing foreign lovers through God's holy temple doors. So, at the opening of Jeremiah, God is a wounded husband calling to his bride, return, return, repent, repent, for you have broken your vow and our covenant. This is the constant lament, the continuous plea of Jeremiah and his prophecies. You see, Jeremiah was born into a time of reform during the reign of the good king Josiah. Israel had forsaken her vows to the Lord. She forgot her marriage and played the whore. But King Josiah rediscovered the vows of their covenant. He learned that Israel was supposed to be bound to God as a husband. She was to give herself to no other God but him, for if she did, The covenant Josiah uncovered promised that God would bring her under punishment. So Josiah was led to call God's bride Israel to widespread repentance. He tore down false idols on high hills, destroyed the temples of false gods, overthrew houses of cult prostitution, and uprooted the pagan places where people sacrificed their daughters and sons. And it is this battle against Israel's spiritual adultery led by King Josiah that forms the backdrop to the book of Jeremiah. They had hoped that Israel would return, return, repent, repent, for they had broken their vow and God's covenant. God put words in Jeremiah's mouth about how he would send armies from the north to punish Israel in the south. Jeremiah warned that they would be uprooted and torn down, destroyed for forsaking their husband, overthrown for cheating on their spouse. But Jeremiah was also given words about how their destruction could be turned around how God would rebuild a nation out of those still faithful to him, how he would plant them in their land, never to be plucked up again. He wanted them to return, return, repent, repent, for they had broken their vow and his covenant. But the outrageous thing was, Israel thought they had continued to keep it. Their leaders led them to believe that they could behave any way they saw fit. Though it made no sense, Israel believed as long as the temple stood, God's covenant would have to stand. She wrongly thought that as long as their marriage altar was intact, they would never be kicked out of their land. As far as the bride was concerned, adultery didn't count as long as God's wedding band stayed on their hand. So despite Jeremiah's pleas that Israel return to her love, her Lord, there seemed to be no healing balm that could cure Israel from playing the whore. But Jeremiah pleaded with Israel to change. He begged her to be transformed. He urged Israel to return, return, repent, repent, for they had broken her vows and God's covenant. But his words could not stand against the allurement of the idols who had warped Israel's heart until it was completely deformed. Israel would not listen to Jeremiah's cries for repentance or pleas for reform. And so, unlike Israel's priests, Jeremiah did not speak of an enduring marriage, but of 
a divorce, for Israel's heart no longer belonged to the Lord. She had handed over what she adores to other gods from other shores, so Jeremiah said she needed a new heart if her adulterous ways were to ever be cured. And through Jeremiah, God promised that he would do this. He would send his spirit to renew his covenant and make his bride internally pure. But the people's sin only got worse. For under the new king Jehoiakim, anything Josiah took down was eventually restored. Everything Jeremiah stood for, Jehoiakim ignored. He rebuilt the high hills of Israel's adultery, reinstated pagan worship and idolatry, and once again led God's people away from their divine monogamy. And this constant spiritual apostasy, their relentless infidelity, broke God's heart because he loved his bride wholeheartedly. Yet Israel took God's promises of love and fidelity and spat in his face. Their hearts were dead to his love and needed to be replaced. And this unrunnable race, this unwinnable battle is what made Jeremiah weep for God's people, for he knew the fate that awaited adulterous Israel. For the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and told him to offer a prophecy against Israel and Jehoiakim, to warn them that God was going to bring punishment in the form of the armies of the Babylonians. As Jeremiah spoke to his nation, he now spoke to Jehoiakim, return, return, repent, repent, for you have broken your vow and God's covenant. But Jehoiakim would not listen. He would not pay attention to Jeremiah's proclamations about death, sword, and famine. So he burned the warnings of Jeremiah's scroll. That was the state of Jehoiakim and Israel's soul. No word from the Lord would pierce or take hold. So God put a word in Jeremiah's mouth about how he would send armies of Babylon from the north to punish Israel in the south. They would be uprooted and torn down, destroyed for forsaking their husband, overthrown for cheating on their spouse. And that's how Jeremiah's account ends, with the conquest of Jerusalem, the burning of the temple, and the exile of God's bride by the Babylonians. Now the bride could see the aftermath of her adultery, the height of her hypocrisy. It was she who uprooted her temple. She tore down its doors. She destroyed her marriage. She overthrew the vows she swore. She had broken the covenant her husband longed to restore. But now she was alone and knew she was a whore. Could she return? Could she repent after breaking her vows and God's covenant? But what was torn down, God would rebuild. What was uprooted, he would replant. God would come again as a husband. Through Jesus, he would remake his covenant. The faithful husband would come to his faithless bride to renew his marriage with his unworthy wife. His love would make us pure again. He would remember our sin no more. He would make us virgins again, though we had played the whore. 
Jesus came with vows too good to be true, that he could take our broken hearts and make them completely new. Hearts that could forsake all others and finally say, I do. On the cross, Jesus proved that covenant breakers can't break his love for us. For he proved his vows unbreakable in the new covenant of his blood. So through Jesus, we return. Through Jesus, we repent. For though we have all broken our vows, Jesus will forever keep his new covenant. Hey, I'm David with Spoken Gospel. Thank you so much for watching our video introducing the book of Jeremiah. We are a nonprofit ministry dedicated to speaking the gospel out of every single corner of scripture. And we do that through lots of ways, but one of the ways we do that is through videos like the one you just watched, where we identify a book's main theme and how that theme is fulfilled in Jesus and his gospel. And we can only make these resources because of generous people like you who give a little bit every month to help us make these videos and make them free for everyone. So if you want to join that community uh, or get all of our free resources, you can head over to SpokenGospel.com.